Hey, Dave here from Excel Jet. So we recently did a survey where we asked people what they wanted to learn most about Excel formulas. And the number one response to that survey was how to create a complex formula. And this is a really huge topic because on the one hand, you've got complex formulas that really shouldn't be complex and can be simplified. And on the other hand, all the way across the spectrum, you've got legitimately insanely complex formulas that do really hard things like extract data based on multiple criteria. So in this video, I wanna introduce the topic with two examples. The first example is an example of building a complex formula that ends up complex, but then later can be simplified. And in the second example, we build a moderately complex formula that really can't be simplified. It's just the way it has to be done in Excel. All right, let's go do the training. Okay, so just a few words to start off um, with how you approach writing more complex formulas in Excel. First, there's a number of things that you should understand. Uh, you need to understand references, Excel's operators in order of operations, logical functions, how Excel works with dates and times, and you should have a general awareness of the functions that Excel provides. Uh, we cover all this in a formula course that we've got, so I'm not going to get into that in this training. As far as what makes a good formula, you want a formula that's got clear logic, it's reliable and robust. And in general, you're trying to write the simplest possible formula. Nobody likes overly complex formulas. For the approach, I recommend that you work in small steps, and I'll show you what I mean in this training, and that you look for opportunities to simplify. And I've got an example of that coming up as well. So in this first example, what we want to do is calculate an expiration date one year in the future in the same month, but at the end of the month. So for June 15th, 2015, we want June 30th, 2016. That's the goal. And let's say that you understand a little bit about the functions that are in Excel. You know there's a year function. So we could pull this date apart, the original date. I'm going to grab the year, and then I'll get the month. and then the day. And then once I've got that, I could, using the date function, I could grab this value here and add one, then put in the month value, then pick up the day value, and that gets us at least into the next year, but we still have the problem of how do we move to the end of the month. Now, let's say you look around a little bit and then you realize there is a function that might help you there. That function is called um, end of month, it's actually EO month. And if you give it a start date, in this case, we want to give it zero months, we want to stay in the same month, it will move the date to the end of the month. And, you know, this is actually the answer we're trying to get to. And if we write that all in one formula, we would have this end of month. And then inside of that, we need to use date. And then inside of date, we use year. We grab the year out of this cell and we add one, and then we get the month, and then we get the day, and then we close it up, and we just have to supply the number of months, which is zero, and this is our, you know, moderately complex formula that gets us our date. Now, after you look at this for a few minutes, you might realize, like, oh, end of month allows me to specify the number of months. So what this means is this whole formula could be reduced to a very simple formula. We could just use end of month and give it the cell and then give it 12 months instead of zero and that will give us the date. Now if I change this to say July 15th, this is gonna give us the right answer and this will too, but you can see that this is a much easier formula to understand. I'll go ahead and put it down here so you can see how it works. End of month, start date, 12. And when we copy this down, you can see we get the correct date. So the point is that there's many ways to solve these kind of problems in Excel. And sometimes as you work through a problem, you may end up with a solution that's overly complex and there might be an opportunity to simplify it. All right, in this example, what we wanna do is we wanna count the number of words in a cell. 
and there is no out-of-the-box function in Excel that will give you a word count. So we'll have to build up our own formula step by step. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to notice that when you have words in a cell, they're separated by spaces, and the number of words is related to the number of spaces. The number of words is actually the number of spaces plus one. So if we can figure out how many spaces we've got, we can figure out how many words are in the cell. So to start off, I'm going to figure out the length of this text. That's 47 characters. And then I need to figure out how many spaces there are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this substitute function. And I'm going to point at this cell up here. I'm going to look for a space and replace it with an empty string. And that will give me this text here with no spaces. And when I copy this down, you'll see that we have 40 characters. So now I know logically that if I take this number and subtract this number, that gives me the number of uh, spaces, which is actually not quite the number of words. To get that, I need to add one more. And this will, you know, this is the basic approach we're going to take in our all-in-one formula. The only thing to notice here before we move on is that if I add another space up here, then that'll increase this. We'll get nine here, and that's not the correct number of words. And in fact, if I add another space here, well, this, this problem will just keep getting worse. And we can fix this by changing the way we're counting the original string. Instead of just counting what's in B5, we can go in and add the trim function here to strip out all extra space that's in B5 before we do a count. And now you can see we get back to the original uh, solution. This gives us 47, because what happens is we actually strip out this extra space here and the one at the front, and then we do a, a character count. And then we can correctly figure out the word count. So the entire all-in-one formula looks like this. It's going to be len trim. And we're going to grab this value here. and then we need to do minus, and it's len. In this case, we want to do substitute, pick up the same cell reference, and we're looking for a space, replacing it with an empty string. And I'm going to close that up and then add one. Okay, that's our all in one formula. And if I copy this down here and then change the references. then we'll get a correct word count. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that training on how to create a complex formula in Excel. The worksheet that I used in the training is attached below this video, so make sure you download the worksheet and give those examples a try. And if you have any questions or comments about this training, then leave a comment below the video. We'll talk to you again soon.